All right, let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the Galaxy S20 FE 5G, and this is a big black pole, which then has a second camera up here, which means I can then give you guys a vertical sort of bird's eye view. So let me know what you think of this. If you like this setup, if you don't, also tell me and I'll change it up. So uh, I'm always trying to improve this channel. If you do have any other feedback, of course, as always, let me know in the comments below. So let's talk about this S20 because it's not any ordinary S20. In fact, I have the ordinary S20 here, which I'll talk about in a second. But this is the FE or the fan edition, which is not to be confused with the only fans edition. Uh, that would be a very different video. Um, this is the cheapest S20 you can buy. It'll set you back £599 for the 4G one or £699, so 100 more if you want 5G. Which actually, if we look at Samsung's website, puts it about £200 less than the standard S20. Although that's not the whole story, but we'll come back to that in a second. So the six different colors, I've got it in the quite nice cloud navy here. And as you can see, it's got this matte texture. It's using glastic, which is the same as what you get on the Note 20, which is kind of like a fancy plastic, a slightly reinforced plastic. It doesn't feel quite as nice and premium as glass, but it's not really a big problem. The only reason we made a fuss on it about the Note 20 is because of how expensive that phone is, but considering this costs just 600 pounds, it's actually pretty reasonable. So if we put this to one side for a second, elsewhere in the box, we just get the plug. This is the uh, 15 watt power adapter. It does support 25 watt charging, but as usual, Samsung skimps a little bit and it gives us 15 watts. This is the European edition, but normally in the UK, you'd get, uh, well, the three pin plug, which we're used to, and a USB-C to USB-A cable. That is it, no headphones, no case. So now we've got everything set up, let's have a bit of a close look around the phone and see what it's like to use. So we're getting a 6.5 inch full HD plus screen. Uh, it is super AMOLED. It's also 120 Hertz, just like uh, the rest of the S20 range, although it's not quad HD, but that's not really a problem because even the uh, Note 20 Ultra, which I'm still using as my main phone, that has 120 Hertz and quad HD plus, but not at the same time. You still have to pick one or the other. So even on this huge 6.9 inch phone, I'm using full HD plus. And so given the size of this, I think sticking with full HD is absolutely fine. And it is good to see that 120 Hertz smoothness. So if we jump into the settings, you get between high and standard. Now standard will increase your battery life a little bit, but it makes it such a smooth experience having that high refresh. I would definitely recommend having it and it is on by default. You can also see we've got this central hole punch cutout for the 32 megapixel selfie camera. On the right side, we've got the power and the volume rocker. Nothing on the left side, no Bixby button or anything like that. Then on the bottom, we've got the uh, speaker grill. It is a stereo speakerphone, so the earpiece acts as a second speaker, which is always useful. Uh, USB-C, and then at the top, we've got the SIM card tray. This supports dual SIM, either 4G or 5G, depending on which model you go for. Obviously, I've got the 5G one here, or you can use that second SIM card tray uh, for a micro SD, so you can expand the storage. So in terms of screen size, this is kind of between the standard S20 and then the S20 Plus. We do also get Gorilla Glass 3 on here as opposed to Gorilla Glass 6 and also IP68 dust and water resistance. So that's the same uh, water resistance as the normal S20. And as well as the same 25 watt charging, we also get 15 watt wireless charging and it supports reverse wireless charging if you want to top up, I don't know, your headphones or other devices as well. So it's running Android 10 with Samsung's One UI on top. So if you've used a Samsung phone for the last year or so, you'll be pretty familiar with this. And it feels good. It feels just like a S20 or an S20 Plus, to be honest. Now, what's interesting is that if you go for the 5G, you get the Snapdragon 865 uh, chip. Whereas if you go for the 4G, you get Samsung's own Exynos 990. So to recap, this starts at £600 for the 4G model, but if you want to pay 100 more, then you get 5G, so that will cost you £700. But not only do you get 5G, but you get the Snapdragon 865, which should give you slightly better performance, also slightly better battery life. I did a couple of videos all about this, and across the board it showed the Snapdragon chip was better. So that is worth bearing in mind if you are thinking about buying this. I would personally pay that little bit extra and go for 5G, but it still feels really, really fast and it will play any game you throw at it. With that 865 or even the Exynos chip, it'll comfortably handle you know, any game for the next few years. So we're basically getting flagship specs with this, which given the price is pretty impressive actually, 
But the best bit is we're also getting a big 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is bigger than the S20 and the S20 Plus, uh, and it's the same size as the Note 20 Ultra. And also given the fact uh, that we have the 865 in this 5G variant of the phone means, in the UK at least, this is probably gonna be the best Samsung phone you can buy in terms of battery life. Now let's talk about this camera, which is essentially the same setup as the S20 with a couple of minor tweaks. So we've got a 12 megapixel main camera along with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a eight megapixel telephoto, which as you can see there gives us a three times optical zoom. So as I say, that is a very similar setup to the standard S20, although this actually has a 64 megapixel telephoto. So they have uh, dropped that for the FE. We don't get 8K, but honestly, 4K 30, 4K 60 is absolutely fine. I think that's what most of us use. And also on the front, uh, we can also shoot 4K with the selfie camera as well, which is always good to see. And also like the new Note 20s, uh, we also get this Pro Video, which can uh, shoot in up to 4K 60. We also get 21 by nine options there. So you can tweak all your settings, just like Pro Photo Mode, but for video. So as you would expect, photos on this look absolutely fantastic. And it is good that we have this versatility of the three lenses. There's none of that macro or depth sensors, which we seem to get on a lot more phones these days, which don't add a whole lot to the experience. And I think maybe bar the Pixel 4a, this probably gives you the best photos you can get for this price tag. Plus, of course, you have the versatility of the two extra lenses, which you don't with the Pixel. So the question is, should you actually buy this? Well. It's kind of difficult actually, because on the one hand, it is very good value and it's the cheapest S20 you can buy, as I say, starting from 600 pounds for the 4G or 700 pounds slash dollars if you want 5G, which I would recommend. So that is actually a good deal cheaper than the standard S20, that's about 200 pounds less. Or is it? Because that's the RRP if you look at Samsung's website, but the fact that this has been out for about seven months now means if you go on Amazon UK or amazon.com, actually, you can get the 4G version of the S20, which is a better phone. It's got a slightly more premium build, a couple of gigs extra RAM, Gorilla Glass 6, that higher quality telephoto lens. It's really not that much more now because of the price drop uh, to get something like the S20. But where's this come from? Why has Samsung actually launched this? Well, honestly, I think it's just to compete with the upcoming OnePlus 8T, which is supposed to be around the corner, and also maybe the Pixel 5. Uh, so they just want something that's a little bit more affordable, refresh everyone's memory that the S20 range is still there because obviously uh, these phones came out about seven months ago now. But in terms of pure RRP, if you're gonna buy it from Samsung's website or go in their store and trade in, then yes, I would definitely go for the founder's edition. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy this? And if so, what color would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. And also, what do you think of uh, the S20 and also the Note 20 in comparison? Because personally, I think the Note 20 has become a bit of a joke. I don't think anyone should buy that unless you have your heart set on the S Pen and you can't afford the Ultra. But even then, Honestly, I'd maybe consider going for the Note 10 Plus from last year instead. But anyway, that's a conversation for a different video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.